Hi, I'm Josh Oliver from Zanata Consulting. In this video, I'm going to go over the Shopify integration with Zoho Inventory. This was taken from our May 2023 webinar on Zoho Inventory, Shopify, and WooCommerce best practices. If you find this video useful, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. Enjoy. With Shopify, you want to first set up your Shopify account. So come in, create an account, and from there you'll have basically a URL that you can integrate with your inventory. So to, all you have to do to add a store is you click add store, and then it will bring you into Shopify apps where you'll click add app. And then from there, it'll ask you to basically log in to your Zoho inventory account. And that's the connection made. Uh, whenever you make that connection, uh, you'll see a store added here and you can add multiple stores. So maybe you have store A, store B, and you want to manage those separately, having orders coming in from both. You can do that. You can have as Forget what the total number of stores you can have in here is, but uh, you can certainly have multiple stores. And if you need more, and maybe if you hit a limit, then just reach out to Zoho and they can help you out. Once you have that store created, we will go into the settings here and we'll see kind of the integration as it's set up through this standard integration. So we have products coming in from Shopify into inventory. This is a one-way push, noting that any item created inside of inventory does not get pushed over to Shopify. It's only a one-way push. And let's say you have a list of items in here that already exist in inventory, it's going to make the connection based on the SKU. It is important that SKU is a unique value and you've set that up for all of your items uh, so that whenever the item syncs from Shopify into inventory, it's not going to create a duplicate and it'll actually match based on that SKU. So we have products coming in, we have orders coming in, and an order in Shopify is going to create a sales order in inventory. Again, that's a one-way push. Uh, we have the option to choose whether or not we want to sync in confirmed and fulfilled, or maybe we just want to bring in the confirmed orders, meaning if an order is auto-fulfilled through Shopify, let's say you're using a third-party vendor or you're doing drop shipping straight from Shopify, uh, if you don't want those sales orders to come into inventory, then you would just want to mark the confirmed, but otherwise you would want to bring in both confirmed and fulfilled. The other two entities we can integrate, we don't have to, are the stock quantities and locations with warehouses inside of inventory. Stock quantity uh, essentially is basically updating Shopify with your stock quantity inside of inventory. Now, this is disabled by default, uh, and you have to enable this to push your stock quantities from inventory over into Shopify. And that basically, if you want to show an item is out of stock on your Shopify page based on your stock quantities inside of inventory this is how you would do it uh, or maybe you have multiple stores set up and you wanted you want to keep zoho inventory as your primary source for your stock then turn this on and you just update your zoho inventory and that will update all of your other shopify stores assuming this is enabled the other entity you can integrate is locations with warehouses in Shopify, you can have multiple locations to manage your stock. Turn this on and you can integrate or you can set that up as well. So that's uh, the basic integration that Zoho offers with Shopify. And that doesn't cover everything. So whenever an order is created inside of inventory, what's missing is the rest of the sales order process, which is the invoice, the payment, and then the package and shipment. Whenever an order is created in Shopify, only the sales order is created. None of the other related records are created, such as if I'm looking at a sales order here, to close out a, a sales order, I need to invoice, I need to pay it, I need to pack it, and I need to ship it. And when an order is created through Shopify, you can pretty much assume that it's going to be paid because you're accepting payment through the actual cart at the end. So we know that all of these orders coming in are paid uh, unless you're doing some other pay at a later time setting, but most likely you are accepting payment right there. So generally we would probably build onto this integration by writing a workflow rule with a custom function that whenever an order is created, it's going to create an invoice and create a payment to mark it as paid. Now, if you haven't seen our other video uh, where I go through that entire workflow, 
and custom function. I even give you the script that you'll need to use to build out that function. Go watch our other video on YouTube. I go through all the details on creating the invoice and the payments. And then I also talk about how we can mark this as packed and shipped as well. Because whenever we have a sales order, we can choose to either fulfill that through uh, inventory, just have it come in and we're going to fulfill everything here. Again, maybe you have multiple sales orders or multiple stores that you're managing and you want one place to fulfill all of those items. Maybe you're just going to be shipping directly from inventory. Then you're just going to come in here and you'll create a package and then from the package you'll create a shipment and when you're creating that shipment you'll have the option to generate a shipping label and and all that whenever you're generating that shipping label you can integrate with ups and uh, fedex and uh, usps and other shipping carriers the other option is to ship it directly from shopify because shopify also has a way to manage shipping and you can integrate with the major shipping carriers from there as well and sometimes you actually get better discounts when you're shipping directly from Shopify based on your Shopify plan. Depending on where you're shipping from, this next automation may or may not work for you. But if you're shipping from Shopify, then you'll want to update the sales order inside of inventory as packed and shipped whenever that shipment is fulfilled in Shopify. And to do that, you would need to write another automation through Zoho Flow that when a Shopify order is fulfilled, you basically come in here and you mark it as packed and you mark it as shipped. That also is in that video that I talked about where we go over the invoice payment. Uh, I also go through how to create that flow for packed and shipped. So highly recommend taking a look at that. Uh, that will definitely take this integration to Zoho Inventory to the next level. And then all of your accounting and physical stock will be updated appropriately. Now let's hop into Shopify real quick. Um, so there's a few things that I want to go over and high level here. So Shopify is its own website and store. Basically, you get an URL that you can go to. So if I go to my online store, so Shopify, it's a URL built out on its own website. You can do your own uh, customization and in HTML inside of Shopify, uh, but you have to think of it as its own entity. You can take certain pages and plug this on a, your WordPress site or another site that you manage, but Shopify really is its own thing that you have to work within. Now, within Shopify, if I go into settings, uh, we have orders, we have products, customers, uh, and then we have like our, our store that we can set up. And then you can also do point of sale, which I'll touch on in a bit. So with orders, orders are coming in from either your online store directly through the website, or they're coming in through your point of sale, or you have employees creating them ad hoc through this page here. Whenever you're creating an order, you're linking items and those items are synced with Zoho inventory. So if you have stock in inventory and you're pushing that stock over, then you will be able to choose items that have stock and move forward from there. That's pretty basic. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on the order process because it's basically the same thing that you would see inside of Zoho inventory. There are some other things to note in products. So you can create collections, which is similar to grouping of items. And this creates a separate page inside of Shopify. And then there are ways to create purchase orders directly from Shopify. However, if you're using Zoho Inventory, I recommend managing your purchase order directly through inventory and then pushing your stock through inventory back into Shopify. So whenever an order is received, then you update your stock into, into Shopify. You could do it inside of Shopify directly, but again, if you're using inventory, I recommend just managing it there. We have transfers to manage it between uh, locations. Don't want to talk too much about that. Uh, gift cards, this is a really nice feature inside of Shopify where let's say you want to issue a gift card or create a, a gift card product to sell. You could do that and set a discount or a set amount of funds given to a customer. And then we have our customers. Customers are syncing from Shopify into inventory. Let's hop into settings real quick. So within settings, we have our store details. Uh, not going to talk too much about that, but I do want to touch on payments and shipping. Likely, you are accepting payment directly from within your cart. So you want to set up your payment gateways within Shopify. And there's a few options. You have Shopify payments, which I actually recommend. Shopify payments is a nice feature that basically gets you access to all of the major payment gateways. 
that's not showing it here, but uh, you will see a bunch of other payment gateways in here, such as Apple Pay, you have Amazon Pay, there's Google Pay. There's a bunch of different payment methods you can get all through Shopify payments. You can do manual payment methods as well. So let's say you wanted to connect a bank deposit or a money order. Uh, there's ways to do that. And then you could also add your own payment gateways to other third-party banks as well. And then we also have shipping. So like I said, you can either ship from Shopify directly or you can ship from inventory. It's really your choice. Whichever one's going to give you the best rate or whichever one works best for your processes. I will say if you are doing serialized items within inventory, then you'll want to ship from within inventory because that's going to be your best way to choose the serial number. Uh, otherwise, if you're not dealing with ship serialized items and you only have this one store, shipping directly from Shopify will do just fine for you. Now, whenever you're setting up your shipping preferences, uh, you do have the option to set it for domestic or worldwide. You'll just need to come in here and uh, manage your locations. So in this case, I have domestic and then rest of the world. Either you are going to have your shipping carrier dynamically populate the shipping price, or you are going to set a flat rate for your shipping. In this case, these are just flat rates across the United States. For the rest of the world, it sh it's actually going to calculate it for both DHL and USPS in this case. It's very easy to add rates. You just click add rate for both of these little sections. Pretty straightforward as far as that goes. Uh, there's a bunch of other settings in here, which I don't have time to go over, but uh, definitely whenever you set up your Shopify store, Click on each one of these tabs, go through each one, and make sure they are set up appropriately. We also have a point of sale, which is a very nice feature with uh, Shopify. Point of sale allows you to, maybe you have your uh, phone or your tablet and you are managing a, a pop-up booth or a farmer's market and you want to create orders right there. Uh, very easy through Shopify point of sale. It's actually an underrated feature in my opinion. Uh, you can purchase har hardware uh, with hardware. You can have a, scar a card reader, or if you have an iPhone, you can actually tap a car credit card on your phone and it will accept payment right there through uh, this point of sale app that Shopify offers. It's a, it's a really great tool. I've used it uh, for my own personal business and it works really well. Uh, and they also have other dedicated hardware that you can purchase from their store as well. Point of sale orders are going to follow the same path. It creates an order inside of Shopify. And it'll create a customer. And then both of those two will sync into Zoho inventory. Likely, if you are creating that order through a point of sale, it's fulfilled at that point. You're handing them the good. Uh, so you don't need to worry about shipping. Payments is captured right there as well. So just make sure your sales order when created in inventory is going to be marked both as paid and shipped. Those are the main notes there. Pricing for Shopify, if you go into settings and you click on plan after you set this up, you can create a free plan just to play around with it. Uh, but to get the features that you want, uh, you'll likely need to up upgrade to either a basic or a Shopify plan is what they call. And there's a few differences. Uh, the main one being is your rates that you're paying Shopify. So you do have a flat rate monthly which is $29 or just $79 a month. But based on these plans, and there's an advance, and there's even one more further than this. I forget what it's called. It's like Shopify Ultimate or something like that. But the main difference between these plans is the rates that you are paying Shopify. So you have your flat rate, but then you also have a transaction rate, which is uh, either 2% or transaction fee for all third party, uh, and then a 1.5 currency conversion fee for anything that's outside of the US or outside of your primary location. So, I mean, if, if you're on the basic, it's 2%, Shopify plan, 1%, and then advanced 0.5%. So based on your volume, you might see that advanced would actually give you a better monthly rate. Maybe 1% is certainly better than 2%. So take a look at your volume, what's going to work best for you, and do that pricing comparison to see which plan is going to uh, work best. You do have a few other benefits of choosing a certain uh, higher plan, which is your discount for Shipping, so 88% discount on shipping, which is phenomenal. You probably won't get such a high discount if you're shipping from inventory. So that could be a real big plus when you're shipping straight from Shopify. All right, so that's that's basically Shopify at a high level. Uh, there's a bunch to it. Again, like I said, it's its own website too, which I didn't even talk about how you can manage 
and theme your website, but there's there's dedicated Shopify developers who can manage and customize uh, your entire website uh, or the front end of this, this store. There's so much you can do, a lot of customization, a lot of things you can build out by just like plug in or click and drag. Uh, but some of the more extensive Shopify sites have a lot of custom work done to them, which certainly is doable, but uh, we won't be able to cover that on today's uh, webinar.